Blazor WebAssembly, Blazor Server, Blazor United, Blazor Mobile Bindings, Blazor Hybrid. There is a Blazor for everyone, so there is a Blazor for you, but with all these different things called Blazor, it might get a little bit confusing. So in this video, we're going to explore what these different Blazors are and which one is the perfect one for you. So let's start at the very beginning. What is Blazor? At its core, Blazor is a single page application development framework built by Microsoft based on C Sharp and .NET, and you can use HTML and CSS to compose your views. But typically when you think about single page application frameworks or SPAs, then you think about Vue or React or Angular or all those frameworks which are based on JavaScript. And the best thing about Blazor is that you don't have to write a single line of JavaScript ever. <laughs> Now, this is not about making fun of JavaScript or any other language for that matter, but the fact is that if you have to switch context between the language that you use daily, C Sharp, and some other language, TypeScript, JavaScript, or whatever, um, it's going to eat into your productivity, right? You have to switch context. How do you do that thing again? And that's just not great. And that's where Blazor comes in. With Blazor, you can stay inside of your C Sharp and .NET ecosystem, use all the tools that you love and are familiar with, Visual Studio, Nuggets, and you can keep writing C Sharp code for all the things that you want to do inside of that single page application. A little fun fact before we dive into the first Blazor flavor, Blazor WebAssembly, did you know that Blazor is a combination of two words? Do you know which ones? No? Browser and Razor. So you probably know what a browser is, right? You're probably using it to watch this video right now. And Razor is the technique that is um, used to render views, but on the server side, when you're using ASP.NET. And Blazor is part of the ASP.NET family, but now these views are rendered also on the client side. That is a, one of the first differences between Blazor. So they put these words together and now we have Blazor, which is kind of funny because technically it should be Brazor. Anyway, let's dive into Blazor WebAssembly. Blazor WebAssembly together with Blazor Server were kind of like the two first flavors of Blazor that were introduced. And Blazor WebAssembly is especially cool because that is very similar to how JavaScript applications work right now, because all the code is executed on the client. Blazor WebAssembly uses WebAssembly and WebAssembly is often abbreviated as WASM, W-A-S-M, which is basically an instruction set that can be used to be interpreted by the host that it runs on, or it can even be used to compile to machine readable code. And it's not a technique that is specific to Blazor. It's not even invented by Microsoft. It's an existing technology um, that is already out there. And the way it actually works is very similar to how .NET works or how Java works if you're coming from the Java world, because you have this high level language like C Sharp or Java that gets compiled into a kind of a like intermediate language. And that is then run on the host basically. So in this case, you can also have this higher level language C Sharp, which is then interpreted, compiled into WebAssembly and then run on the client's machine. And because WebAssembly is an existing technology that has been out there for a while, it's now supported by all modern browsers on iOS, Android, Windows, Mac OS, Chrome, Safari, Edge, Firefox, doesn't really matter. It's supported on all these modern version browsers. So just install that and you can run WebAssembly things. So the only thing that Microsoft basically did is create a compiler that takes C-sharp code, turns that into WebAssembly, and suddenly you can run inside of all those browsers. And by doing that, you suddenly have a technique that is very similar to JavaScript. All the code is executed on the client and we can make this rich experience, single page applications by just using C Sharp. So what are the things that you want to take into consideration when you're going to work with Blazor WebAssembly? Because you're going to download the full application to your client, there is a couple of things to be mindful of. First, the performance is probably going to be good, right? Depending on the client, you know, there can be a thin client with like lower specs um, that will make the performance not great, but typically it will be a powerful machine, a powerful mobile device that you can run your application on. And it's there's no going back and forth between a server for all the interactions besides maybe some REST APIs that you want to call into, but otherwise everything runs on the device, on the client, so the performance should typically be pretty good. Also, because of that, this allows you to create offline applications. After that initial download, you can maybe build it as a progressive web app. That's definitely an option as well, where it's just installed on the user's phone and it can be accessed as a offline application and be used anywhere, which is something obviously that you have to take into account when building your application, that it can be offline, but you can build offline applications this way because the application lives and runs on your client. But then there's the other side of things. The application is downloaded in full to your client, which is the thing that 
that I just said. But this can also be a downside, right? Because you don't only have to download your whole application, but your application runs on a specific version of the .NET runtime. And we don't have .NET runtimes installed on our machine anymore. We deliver that together with our application. So the .NET runtime that you're using for your application is being downloaded together with your whole application onto the client. Now, that might sound like a lot, but for modern .NET versions, the .NET runtime is like less than a megabyte. So that's like less than your average cat GIF, 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 GIF. What's your team? Let me know down in the comments. That's going to be less than your average uh, image on the internet, but it's still something that you want to be mindful of whenever you're building applications that might be um, important in certain areas in the world where bandwidth is not widely available or where it's very uh, expensive, right? And of course, the initial load time is going to go up as well because the application has to be downloaded in full before you can actually start working with it. And one more thing in terms of security, again, you're downloading the whole application to the client. So if you have some exciting, super secret business logic inside of your application, they have the DLLs that have the code in there. So they could decompile it, they could maybe look into it. So that's something to take into consideration as well. And something that is not possible with our next flavor, which is Blazor Server. Blazor Server is more of your traditional approach, if you will, your application runs on a server, probably in the cloud, um, all your application logic, all your business logic is going to be safely living there. So the thing that I just mentioned about security doesn't apply here. The only thing that gets sent to the client is the changes in HTML. So the rendered stuff basically. And because it's a single page application, it's only going to replace the things in the browser that it actually has to. So that's also again, uh, kind of the downside, there is a constant persistent signal R connection between the server and the client going back and forth with each click that they do, um, determining what is going to be the change in the UI, and that's going to be pushed back to the client. So there is no offline capabilities with this, you have to have this constant connection, um, you will have your code more secure over there. Um, it is much more lightweight on the client. So if you're working with thin clients, if your clients are not very powerful, then this is probably the way to go. There's no heavy processing on the client side going on. And you can do all the heavy processing in the server. So this is more your traditional approach, but now encapsulated in this single page application framework and still build with C sharp and .NET. Then after Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server, we got Blazor Hybrid or .NET MAUI Blazor or it has a couple of different names, but Blazor Hybrid is the thing that we landed on mostly, I think. And Blazor Hybrid is super exciting. It doesn't really have anything to do with using WebAssembly or using server, but it has everything to do with running a Blazor application directly on the client machine. Blazor Hybrid is a technology that shares a lot of the concepts with the other Blazor flavors that we've just mentioned, but in terms of hosting, it is completely different. There is no web host that it's running on. There is no WebAssembly that we're compiling to because remember, Blazor is just another .NET application. So it can run directly on the .NET runtime and we have the .NET runtime running through .NET MAUI on iOS, on Android, on Windows, on macOS, on Tizen. So suddenly we have this Blazor hybrid application that we can run on all these platforms natively. .NET MAUI stands for .NET Multi-Platform App UI, and that is Microsoft's solution for building cross-platform apps based on C Sharp and .NET. Now, if we combine that with the power of Blazor, we suddenly have this crazy powerful solution, which will allow you to take your existing Blazor application or maybe your reusable Blazor components that you might have been working on and reuse those inside of a native mobile client application, or not even mobile, you can also run it on desktop. And you can leverage all the power of the client that you're running on. You will have full control, full power over the Windows machine that you're running on, over the iOS device that you're running on. Basically, the only thing that you're doing is replacing the UI, the native UI on that platform, which is one of the strengths of .NET MAUI, but you're replacing that with a web UI. So you're replacing that with HTML, CSS, with all the advantages that you get with that. Because Blazor has Bootstrap built-in. Um, you can replace that with anything you want, of course, because it's just HTML and CSS, but Bootstrap is built into the template, which makes it super responsive. So if you have an iPad, it will be like, you know, everything is exploded. If you have a small form factor device, a little Android phone, everything will be collapsed and will be nice and responsive. And if you hold it sideways, it will all go automatically with the user following their journey, which is really, really great. You get all that stuff for free because it's proven web technology that has been out there for a while, but you can still get the performance. It runs as a native .NET application on that device. 
you can reach into all the sensors. You can use geolocation, you can use the camera, because if you're running Blazor in a browser, then naturally you're going to be bound to the browser sandbox, which is a good thing, right? You don't want to go up, uh, ending up to going to the wrong website, and then that website will format your hard drive. That's not something that we can do, or all kinds of other funny stuff. The good thing is that with Blazor Hybrid, with that at Maui, you totally can format your hard drive. <laughs> so that's there, right? You can run that application on those devices. You're not bound to the sandbox anymore. Mind you, for apps, there are still other sandboxes. Uh, you need all kinds of permissions for that. So make sure that you request the right one. You still have to know a little bit about cross-platform development. Absolutely. Uh, especially if you're going to work with mobile devices. But you can now run your Blazor application natively on that platform and access all the power without having to worry about web services and all that kind of stuff. So you can have offline applications, you can leverage all the sensors, all the crazy powerful cool stuff there, and you can distribute it through the App Store, use push notifications and all that goodness that comes with the mobile and, and desktop ecosystems. Then before I go into the Blazor mobile bindings, which is a different thing entirely, I want to talk about Blazor United, which is the hot new thing that's coming in .NET 8 at the time of recording, .NET 8 has not been released, but Blazor United is coming as part of that. As the name kind of implies, Blazor United unites Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. So you will get the best of both worlds. Then what does that mean exactly? Well, by combining both Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server, we're going to try and minimize the disadvantages of both of these technologies and maximize the advantages of both. For instance, that means with Blazor United, you can stream new content to the client as it comes in. So no initial download for a complete client application, but you can just stream new things as they come in and still have client side processing. And about that processing, you have full control now, or there is an automatic mode about where things are rendered. Is this going to be rendered by WebAssembly on the client, or is this going to be rendered by the server? Or is there an auto mode and the technology is going to decide automatically what is the optimum way to render this and then push it to the client? This flexibility is particularly valuable if your project needs that interactivity and snappiness of a client-side application, but the security and the robustness of a server-side application, you have full control over what is rendered where and how to exactly do that. It might sound a little bit cryptical like this. Probably if you're going to look into the different Blazor things, um, you might want to have a play with all of this and it will become clear automatically. Or of course, if you want to know more about one of these variations, let me know down in the comments. Now, with all the flavors that I just mentioned, uh, Blazor WebAssembly, Blazor Server, Blazor United, Blazor Hybrid, you can all share code between these projects as well. So if you have a client-side application with Blazor Hybrid and you have architected your application in a way that it uses all kinds of reusable components because there is no web target with .NET MAUI, so you can target desktop and mobile devices, but not web, but you can wrap everything in reusable components. You can reuse those components without any change on the web in the browser by using Blazor United or Blazor WebAssembly, which is super cool and that makes this solution super powerful. And what I didn't even mention yet about the Blazor Hybrid approach is that it's also available for Windows Forms and WPF. The Blazor hybrid technology is built up on a web view that's called the Blazor web view, which is a specialized web view for hosting Blazor applications. That Blazor web view is built on top of .NET 6 and also made available for WinForms and WPF. So as long as your WinForms or WPF application can get up to .NET 6 or of course .NET 7 or .NET 8, but at least .NET 6, you can implement that Blazor web view inside of your application and kind of like modernize your old gray Windows Forms application from the inside out by adding Blazor components that you already are developing for your new web application or your new Blazor hybrid application. So you can be the, the, the sky is the limit with this basically. Now then there is one odd one out, which is the Blazor mobile bindings, which started as an experiment from Microsoft, also coming from the Blazor hybrid from the .NET MAUI side of things. Uh, but now it's more of a community initiative that has taken the experiment from Microsoft and taken it even further, which is basically bringing the Blazor, the Razor syntax to the .NET MAUI world. If you're going to build a .NET MAUI app, which is a cross-platform app built on C Sharp and .NET, which runs across iOS, Android, Windows, Mac OS, all those platforms from a single code base, then you typically build your user interface with XAML, uh, which has been around forever since WPF, do I dare say it, Silverlight, um, or just plain C Sharp code, right? But with the Blazor syntax, a lot of people have come to love that, which is basically mixing your syntax um, just in line uh, with the C Sharp code, out putting HTML and all that kind of stuff. 
And that is exactly what the Blazor mobile bindings do. It brings that Razor syntax into your .NET MAUI application, basically replacing the XAML with um, Razor syntax. But in this case, you're not mixing it with HTML and CSS. You're mixing it with XAML components, so still the markup components, but it has this more fluent way of mixing your logic with your UI that a lot of people have come to love now that Blazor is back around. So if you're building .NET MAUI apps, uh, the paradigm of .NET MAUI is to translate everything on the abstraction layer, so a button a label to whatever that should be on the platform, right? A UI button or a UI label in case of iOS. And in this case, with the Blazor mobile bindings, we're not going to translate our UI to a web UI. Some people don't like that, and I totally get why that is, especially if you're building a mobile app. Um, but in this case, the Blazor mobile bindings are going to actually translate it to those platform components, just as .NET MAUI is doing that, but with a completely different syntax that people might find easier to write or might find easier to read or just easier to use and have more fun in life in general. And that is all there is to know about the different Blazor flavors. I hope this brings some clarity in your search for the right Blazor for you. Um, or did I miss one or two? Let me know down in the comments so I can learn from you. And of course, this is all true for the time of recording because Blazor and C Sharp and .NET are developing at the speed of light. So by the time you're watching this, um, some things might already be outdated or there might be new stuff announced, which is really cool to work with. And of course, I will be there with a follow-up video. So make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss anything. If you've liked this one, please consider liking this video and I'll be seeing you for the next one.